We are at Universal Studios today. I haven't been since the mask mandate was lifted. I know I've come a few times for a taste of Universal and a few other times. Typically, I come with my family, usually my dad, because we all have passes. And we don't really go on any rides because they can't really handle the roller coasters, but we'll go on like Jurassic World, the tram ride, and Transformers, a few like the lighter rides, so really not the mummy, and we'll sit through all the shows. But today is my first time having an express pass. It is Friday. I came a little bit later for that purpose. So I'm gonna see how the wait times are. A lot of people online are asking, is an express pass worth it? And it's not cheap, I know that. And for a full transparency, I actually won this pass last year for the pandemic, uh, one of their annual pass holder contests on Instagram because they shared a photo of mine because I haven't been able to use it until now. So we're gonna go ahead and use it and I'll update you on times, wait times, and how long it takes if you were to wait in a regular line or use the express pass and to show you the rest of my day. I already had my voodoo donuts, so now we're gonna go into the park and have a great day. So. have to stop by Voodoo Donuts when I'm coming to Universal Studios. Typically, I'll get the Memphis Mafia, which is my absolute favorite donut here. It's got the peanut butter, the chocolate, the banana, all that into a giant fritter. I was gonna get that until I noticed they have a new donut, at least new to me. I don't know when they brought it on, the white chocolate cheesecake. You get that. They kind of took off the decorations because she grabbed it with the wrapper, but here we go. Let's go ahead and try it out. white chocolate raspberry cheesecake actually. It's a pretty good donut, not too sweet. Voodoo donuts, I think, they're definitely underrated. There's a lot of good donuts. There's a lot of bad donuts in LA. These are some good ones. We're gonna head on to the park. Like I said, I have my uh, express pass for today. So I'll show you guys if it's worth it or not to get an express pass on a Friday. We are in the park. I'm probably gonna head down to the lower lot first and do like Jurassic World, Transformers, The Mummy. Typically when we come, we do start with the tram ride. Typically we are here right at park opening and there's already a pretty good crowd as you saw the wait times. They're all about 45 minutes to a little bit over an hour. It's about noon right now and yeah, crowds are definitely picking up. And kind of like Disneyland, the mask situation, about half, I'd say about half the people are wearing, half people aren't. A chance to take this planet back. The time has come. It's time we move some metal and drop. The lower lot is packed. I mean, we really get lucky with Disney having limited capacity still. I'm gonna head over to Jurassic World first, and I really wanna see Megatron because I haven't seen him since pre-pandemic. He's always been coming either various weekends or later in the day when I'm usually gone. Since I'm gonna be here later, you know, I'll be able to see him now. Jurassic World is currently a 70 minute wait, and the Express Pass, there's nobody in that line, and maybe one or two boats, and I'll be on the ride, so maybe a 10 minute wait, not bad at all. So I hopped in line at 12.05, it is now 12.18, not even 15 minutes from getting in line to finishing the ride. I'd say so far it's pretty worth it considering I would have been in line for over an hour if I didn't have the express pass. Now let's go ahead and go to the mummy and then we might do transformers and wait for Megatron. You can't see me. The mummy is currently a 35 minute wait and I'm walking right on through. And if you can see all the crowd, yeah, it's a pretty long line. It's 
like that, I walk right on to the next car. After they finish loading this one up, I'm gonna be on the next one. 12.22, I walked into line, and like the very entrance of the line, and 12.27, I'm off the mummy. Five minutes total? I mean, that's absurd. I mean, you rarely have walk-on without express pass like that. So let's go ahead and head over to Transformers and see how that weight is. Moving the back, the base is under siege. On a stealth transport pod assigned to it. So 12.38, done with the ride? Yes, that's pretty nice of having such a short wait. And I'm gonna wait for Megatron now. He comes on at one. I don't know if I wanna wait for the Isla Nubar line. It's a pretty long line. I'm sure by the time that finishes, then It'll be one o'clock given. It's not too hot of a day, but it is pretty warm, especially if you're standing out in the sun a lot. It might be nice to get a refreshing drink. Just a random thought. Does anyone else have a struggle to buy clothes, merchandise, hats, shirts in theme parks? Like even when I was at Disney a few weeks ago, there was a ton of things I wanted, but just couldn't get myself to actually buy like a few shirts and everything. And even today, like I want a Universal hat, a Jurassic Park hat, and I just can't get myself to buy it. It's a weird feeling I just I was thinking of earlier. So if you have that same feeling, you know, share that down below. Oh, uh, you. If you're going to wear a muscle shirt, get some muscles first. <laughs> I bet you can't do 100 diamond push-ups right now. 100 diamond push-ups, let's see it. Right uh, now, 100 diamond push-ups. I knew it. Both your arms look small, so what difference does it make? Get out of here! His ego is bigger than his arms. <laughs> we just got done seeing uh, Megatron. We're heading back to the upper lot right now, and we're gonna go on probably Simpsons and the Harry Potter ride. I always forget what the name of that one is. The one with the broomsticks, not the uh, light of the hippogriff. Of course, I remember the one and never go on. I will mention one more thing. There are hand sanitizer stations kind of scattered throughout the park. On some of the rides, I have seen them so far, like on Jurassic and Transformers, but not on the Mummy. But then outside the lower lot, there are some areas with that as well. So they are kind of still keeping their cleanliness and sanitization uh, available. Simpsons ride is currently a 50 minute wait and I'm gonna head over to the express line and see how long that takes. definitely the longest wait so far. I got in line at 127 and we are done at 155, but still a lot better than the 50 minute wait that they have on the regular line. So less than 20 minutes to get in line and go on the ride. Got my frozen butterbeer, definitely prefer this over the regular butterbeer. And it's not too cold, so I won't be getting the hot one. There are two butterbeer carts, remember that. There's one right in front of three broomsticks and then one closer to the rides right behind me here. I think the lines are about the same. It's about, it doesn't take too long. Whichever one you go to, you're gonna kind of expect the same amount of weight. And I also realized closer to the front near three broomsticks, there's like a beer and butterbeer ice cream cart. And by beer, I mean like Modelo and Cerveza, like adult <laughs> alcoholic beer. And then you can get the butterbeer ice cream too. I don't know if that's new. I've never noticed it before over there. Maybe they moved it or maybe they just brought it in. You can get that over there as well. Just got done on Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. I think that's what it was. I still can't remember what the name of the ride is. And I got in line at 3.08. I stopped a few moments to take some videos and pictures like you just saw and got off at 3, what is it, 3.22. So less than 15 minutes in total. And we got stuck on the ride. I got stuck right under a Dementor. The Dementor's face was like right there. For a solid three minutes, I was staring at a Dementor in my face. The ride just wasn't moving. And I was halfway upside down and my phone was in my bag. I couldn't pull it out because if I opened my bag, everything was gonna fall out. So I was at an angle, facing up with a Dementor right there in my face. 
That was not it. I forgot how nauseous that ride gets me. Not too bad, not like a roller coaster. Well, almost like a roller coaster, so I wouldn't go on that again. They were offering people to cut the line to get right back on it, so that was really nice of them. Sometimes if there's a major delay or something that goes wrong, they will offer express passes to the people. In this case, they were just letting you cut the line basically to get back in. I didn't want to go that route again because I probably would have gotten more sick if I did. It was, it's really cool. I forgot how cool the ride is with the animatronics and set designs. The screens are a little bit blurry. I'm still not a fan of that. I know they used to have it 3D with the actual goggles that would make it worse. And I think just the way the screen is projected, that's the biggest thing, the actual motion of the ride. If you do get nauseous on roller coasters, I definitely don't recommend going on that ride. If you can manage and be okay if you haven't eaten yet, I'd say go on it and at least experience it one time. Probably a once a year ride for me. I won't be going on that again for a good while. I managed to get on the tram 45 minutes standby without the express pass. With the express pass, walk right on. Alrighty guys, we just got the green light to get out of here. It's definitely worth it. One of these stages is taken over by a show, so I am constantly on the lookout for security guards flagging me down or red lights flashing outside of our sound stages. If I spot either one of these things happening, that is my cue from production to get off the microphone because they can hear me. So, if I stop speaking abruptly and then all of a sudden this appears on your screens, order to add a pop. I know it's weird, but it works. And I'll definitely what's out for you guys is that massive flash flood headed right for car three. Does anybody have a poncho back there? Seriously, or maybe want to scoot in? All this stuff I'm going to put you guys through today. And by stuff, we just mean all this fun we're going to have. What's not been fun lately for me, though, Liam? That's it. You just survived an 8.3 on the right. Oh my gosh, it's not over. On the right, here's your first one. Real Boeing 747, they purchased for this film just so it could be demolished. It does look like a bit of a mess, like this was kind of thrown around, but every single piece of debris was placed down one piece at a time. The airplane the crash site set is perfect. We just got off the tram, it is about 4.20, we hopped on at 3.35. As you saw earlier, there was virtually no wait, just a brief moment to let the car in front of us load up and we got on. I love the tram. We have, Even though we have annual passes, it's always great to come on. We always joke around my parents and I that, oh, we're going on the tram again. But really, it's a great experience. And in my opinion, no matter what seat or car you are on, you always kind of have a different experience with it because you see a different viewpoint or you see new things or different things, especially like Kong, you'll have both perspectives or on the uh, Jaws, you know, that Amityville or Amity area, you'll have like the viewpoint from different angles. So yeah, it's always worth coming on. Today we actually had a technical difficulty on Fast and Furious area and the doors just kind of open on their own according to the uh, tram, the tour guide and the ride just shut off and we waited for a few moments and then they called in and said, no, you have to get out of the building. So it was a pretty big technical difficulty, which we got to see maybe the first few moments of it, which is fine for me because I've seen it a million times, but unfortunate for those who have not. Let's cake. This is really good. Mm. Very few things at Universal I think are worth it. This is one of them. Yeah, definitely. Definitely get the chocolate press legends. Finally going to Waterworld. Probably going to be the last thing of the day. And already a crowd forming for Express and the regular crowd.
about 6 o'clock and about 6.12 they started moving the express line in. We are on I guess the far left section that's where they filled us all in and I think the regular line might be coming in also and if you do have an annual pass you can come back and sit in a different section every time and get a different viewpoint from the entire show. That wraps up my day at Universal Studios. So the big question, is an Express Pass worth it? Absolutely. If you don't have an annual pass, if you have an annual pass like I do, I wouldn't say it's worth it because you, you, you can come whenever you want and you don't have to worry about long waits. And you know, if you wait a long time for Jurassic World one time, you come back another time, you go on Despicable Me or Simpsons, whatever it may be. But if you don't have one, I definitely recommend getting an Express Pass. As you saw, those 45, 60 minute, 80 minute waits were 10, 15 minutes, I think. The, the longest I mentioned was a 20 minute wait because of the ride breakdown for Harry Potter. You beat a lot of the lines for the shows. The only bad thing I will say, and not the bad thing, but the con is that there's no express line for food vendors and restaurants and some of those got pretty bad. You saw like the Isla Nubar, I wouldn't wait in that line. Definitely get an express pass. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Thank you all for tagging along on today's geeky adventure. Be sure to like my video and subscribe to my channel and we'll see you next time. Two more things I forgot to mention earlier. One, as far as City Walk goes, I believe every restaurant except uh, Wasabi has reopened. So Baba Gum, Johnny Rockets, the Mexican restaurant, uh, Jamba Juice, and Ms. Menchie is open. Menchie's is open too, Voodoo. All the upper deck restaurants, I believe they are all open as well, the ones right up there. The movie theater has reopened. Of course, F9 is like a big premiere. Before, when you would park and you'd have to kind of go through like the two parking structures and go through temperature checks they'd have that one area under the food courts closed right there so that used to be closed off now you can walk right through there as soon as you park whichever entrance is closer to you you can just walk right through because obviously there's no more temperature checks you're not limited to where you come in and the restaurant situation in city one